Hey everybody, welcome back to another Godot tutorial, a super quick one this time. Today we're going to learn how to use Godot's nine patch rectangle to create nice stylized backgrounds for our UI. And these stylized backgrounds are flexible, so you can just sh arrange them in whatever kind of rectangle shape you want, while the border is preserved. So it's not stretching the image, it's kind of like dynamically auto-tiling it. This is really nice because if you have multiple pop-ups in your game or multiple things that need this kind of background, you can just make this once, instance it, and then use it wherever you need it in your game. You don't need to cut out a new perfectly sized image every time or anything like that. So let's get started. By the way, my name's Drew. I teach people how to get into game development through videos like this. If you're into that kind of thing, please hit the subscribe button. Now, the first thing we're going to do is design an asset that's going to be the source of our flexible rectangles. Uh, so I'm going to open up this asset that I pre-prepared in a sprite, which this is my favorite pixel art program of choice, but you can use whatever you want. Um, the Godot node that we're using is called a nine patch rectangle or nine patch rect. And that's very important. The nine part is very important there. That means that this, this image is going to have like nine distinct zones. And that's what Godot is going to use for auto tiling. Uh, so this particular image is 15 by 15 total, and it happens to be a square, but you don't have to use a square. If, say you want this like upper part to be taller than, than the lower part or something, that's totally fine. This just happens to be cut where I've got a section of 5 by 5 here. That's going to be the top left corner. I've got the top middle here, the top right. I know I'm being imperfect with my selections, but you get the idea. And then Godot, we're going to plug those numbers into Godot so it knows the measurements. And then as we expand the rectangle, Godot will expand the center slice here. Now let's go back to Godot. And in here in our world map, this is just a thing we were working on in previous videos, but pay no attention. Whatever project you're working on, this will be fine. I'm going to right click and add a new child node. And I'm going to search for nine. And see, I get some, some options here. But the one I'm looking for is nine patch rect. I'll create that. And now this is going to feel a lot like working with sprites. You see that over on the right, this is actually a inherits from Canvas, but it's got some similarities where it accepts a texture. And so I'm going to go ahead and drag my UI background nine, which that's just the name of the asset we were looking at in a sprite and see that it appears here. But as I drag it, it kind of stretches it and contorts it. It's just, it's wrong, right? That's not what we want. We need to now plug in the right measurements and configure this thing to be flexy and stretchable. To do that, you just come over here to Inspector, uh, you spindle open patch margin, and in here you can plug in the measurements of your asset. So like we said before, mine are all designed uh, by five by five squares. So we're gonna go five over from the left, five from the top, five from the right, uh, five from the bottom. And again, if your asset's a certain way, like maybe the top stretch um, is, is thicker, like maybe it's a taller header or something, it's totally fine if this number is larger. But for my asset here, we just want, um, it's all even. And that's it. So now I have it. I can drag it and move it around. You notice that as I zoom in, we don't lose any quality on the crispness of the pixel art. It's just kind of there. And I can put it wherever I want. I can also dynamically change the measurements with code. Say I'm filling it with text or something, and I need uh, maybe to add another line of text. You can just plop it to be bigger. It just works. Now, as you're working on a game, you may find that you need to reuse this exact same UI pattern multiple times. And so instead of going through this process we just went through every single time, um, what you can do is just save this node that we created as its own scene tree. So I'll right click, say save branch as scene, we'll call it like UI background or so, I don't know, UI pop-up. You may have different types of UI, of course, in your game. But now you see this little icon has appeared. That means that this is now a shared asset. So if we go back and edit it, it'll edit it across all instances of our game, ensuring consistency. And that's all there is to it. It doesn't seem like much, but it is a really awesome pattern that I find myself using all the time. It's just great to have the flexibility uh, so that you can continue to change your UI without needing to like recut new assets every time or anything like that. So that's all for this one today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.